Thank you, Rob. Really excited to be here at conference 2019. Looking forward to meet you all. Um, I hope to take the next 15 minutes or so to walk you through what um, F5 and Nginx have done for us at Dell. And also a little about you know, the lessons learned and advice that we have gathered thus far on our journey with these great products. So while Dell needs little to no introduction, what you may find is an interesting fact is that a significant portion of Dell's revenue is generated from their online sales channels, also known as Dell.com. And as a lead site reliability engineer for Dell.com, things can get pretty interesting. Because just minutes of downtime can translate to millions of dollars of revenue loss for our company. And just, just to clarify the, the previous point, if any of you in the room have a Dell laptop, a Dell computer, and you're having issues with it, I'm not the right guy to fix it. <laughs> so let me talk a little about um, what SRE means at Dell. At SRE, we're looking to change culture and look at operational tasks with an engineering mindset. And what that means from an execution standpoint is we'd like to improve our monitoring coverage, uh, identify drivers of instability, which then leads to a reduction in points of failure. Yes, we're looking to achieve three nines of availability, not five. We like to under-promise, over-deliver at SRE. And last but not least, we're looking to transform how we deploy code. And we all know that when we frequently deploy to production, there's a possibility of impacting customers. But at the same time, while we accelerate that, we want to make sure that our dev teams are also able to deploy quickly to production without impacting a customer experience. And just, just before I get into a little bit of what, what we do with Nginx at Dell, I just want to walk you through what our previous routing architecture at Dell has been like. See, all traffic that goes to Dell.com passes through a reverse proxy. We call, we call it request routing. And just, just to explain how it works, request comes in from, from a customer's browser. It hits our F5 LTMs. And then that sprays the traffic through to our highly available request routing culture. Uh, and this cluster basically has all the business logic and routing logic for Dell.com. Just to expand a little more, let's say a user requests www.dell.com slash shop. And depending on his user agent, his request headers, his cookies, the reverse proxy decides to send the request to, say, back in one. And this was a fantastic solution for us. The product that we've been using has, is pretty amazing. But as with all things that are good, we ended up over-engineering it, it a little bit. Just to give you an idea, I don't know if you can see that, but that's 12,000 lines of config in a single config file. If I was to print that out, just to give you a visual, it would be the size of a small paperback novel. Um, so this was a problem we were dealing with. So how did we solve for it? Or I'll just get into, I'll, I'll just summarize the problems that we had with the existing architecture. So it was obviously centralized. Um, a single point of entry and failure. Technical expertise to manage that complex solution was limited to a very few individuals at our company. It was obviously monolithic. There's no, no argument there, 12,000 lines of config. But it also, because of its complexity, it also lacked basic testing and automation capabilities. And nowadays, features like A-B testing, Canary, blue-green variable support are available, but in our solution, they were not available out of the box. And because of all these reasons, we've been unable to make a high frequency of change to our production environments without increasing the risk of site outage. So how did we solve for all of this? What we did was we took that giant reverse proxy and we broke them into Nginx clusters, which we were using as reverse proxies. And we gave each of those Nginx clusters to application teams. So give you a little background on what, what I mean by application team is 
under the Dell.com umbrella, we have various experiences. We have a card experience. We have a config experience. We have a shop experience. We even have an authenticated experience for our relationship customers, which we call Premier. So when I say application teams, I mean the teams that own each of those individual applications and experiences. And those were the ones who we gave these clusters of Nginx instances to. Um, and we'll quickly now just get into how this benefited our, um, our time to deploy to production. I'll just get into all the benefits really quick. OK, so from a monolithic setup, we moved to a distribu decentralized distributed setup. Each one of their teams own their own Nginx proxy, so we go from a risky to risk averse architecture. If somebody, if somebody was to change something in their reverse proxy, instead of breaking the entire website, oh, by the way, th those 12,000 lines of config, a single, a single line of change could break a multi-billion dollar website. Now what, we're, what we've done is we've reduced that risk. So if, if one of the, say, shop team decides to go and make a change in there, they only break their own experience. They don't break the experience as a whole. So that was, a, that was a big deal for us. Increased bandwidth to deploy code to production. With our previous setup, you could only make changes in the production environment after 7 p.m. CSD, so that you don't, affect, you don't have a possible effect on US customers. Uh, you could only do one change at a time, because we already have so many lines of config. It's, we're, we're going to add only a little bit at a time going forward. So all of that sort of went away. Uh, this ushered, also ushered in the DevOps model, where we were able to only deploy changes once a requisite set of test cases pass. And this was missing, again, in the previous architecture, simply because it's so difficult to, to all time test such a com complex config and a complex architecture. Um, we gained a much deeper visibility into what was going on in our ecosystem. Using Nginx logging, we were even able to ingest entire request responses into our Splunk instances and build dashboards to really view what's going on in our ecosystem. So we got, we got a, lot, a lot of value from that piece as well. Um, Canary, Canary style ramp of traffic was a big deal for us. Uh, going by the complexity of our ecosystem, we've always been challenged with being able to test in non-production with production data. But that's what Canary brought to us, is that we could send, let's say, 10% of traffic and just see how everything is. If it's all smooth, I'll dial it up a little more. That's a huge win for a complex ecosystem like Dell. And that also is helping us move to our modern cloud platforms like PCF and Azure, because I don't have to flip a switch and move everything to PCF all at once. I just start with 10%. I see my KPIs, SLA, SLOs. If everything looks good, I can continue to ramp it up 20, 50%, whatever, what have you. This drawing talks a little about what the architecture looks like in detail. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but if you're interested in knowing how, how we did this at Dell, you know, please feel free to come grab a hold of me. I'll be more than happy to walk you through it and, and show you how we did things and are continuing to do things. So what's the future for Nginx at Dell? As you saw on the benefits slide, that Nginx is going to play, continue to play a key role in migration to PCF and Azure from our legacy infrastructure and accelerate our digital transformation journey. We're also looking to augment our existing API management and API gateway solutions using Nginx. There are some teams looking to deploy the Ingress controller uh, for PKS. Um, a very interesting use case. One of the internal teams at Dell developed a really simple UI um, that was sitting on top of the Nginx configuration and was basically targeted at our content teams and non-technical folks so that they could use that UI to build marketing campaigns, um, simple redirects and routing rules. And as a result of that, we're we're migrating 200,000 redirect mirror URLs to Nginx from our legacy redirect manager tool. 
So some of the lessons learned and advice uh, that we had on this journey. So we realized we needed to work a lot closer with our infrastructure teams. We ran into issues with Linux permissions, which subnet should the Nginx instances live on, uh, what were security considerations. And all of these were ultimately solved, but they had a long lead time because we didn't involve the right people at the right time. For example, we didn't involve our enterprise load balancing team early on. So when they heard about what we were trying to do, they're like, hold on a second. Do you, do you know what you're doing here? But as they saw the value that Nginx brought in terms of automation, reduced time to deploy, they're so excited. They're actually here at conference. I think I can see them. They're attending all the trainings that got here before me. They're probably going to leave after me. So it's, it's brought a lot of value in, in that sense, if, if we had engaged them earlier. Um, build an SRE team. You know, all of what I just spoke about would just remain a bunch of unknown unknowns if we didn't have an SRE team. The fact that we had security, DevOps, network, DBAs, all of us working together was, was what made something like this possible. You see, large enterprises tend to work in silos. You have highly specialized teams of network, security, system engineers, Linux experts, and they're all laser focused on the task at hand. And you cannot interrupt them with your requirements until their cycle frees up. And we broke those silos by onboarding the best of them into our SRE team. And that introduced empathy between these otherwise disparate disciplines, which led to breakthrough collaboration and now provides the foundation for undertakings such as these. Don't be afraid to empower your dev teams to own their own proxies. You know, if they break it, they fix it. And with the right checks and balances in place, it's much more effective now because app teams are able to deploy at their own pace, go when they want to. It, it gives a lot more room for them to be creative and add more value rather than being bogged down by OK, we got to go to this guy, and he's going to tell us when we can go to production. I've got my code ready, but I got to ask the gatekeeper, hey, can you add my rule so that you know, traffic can actually flow in? All of that is taken care of. Well, but at the same time, we still have the, the SRE team still controls the overall policies that make sure that we limit exposure. We don't, it's not, it's not going to be a free-for-all where the dev teams are just doing what they want. We're, there's still going to be controls that the SRE team brings um, at, at the top level. And with that, uh, thank you very much for your time. I hope you were able to extract some value from this. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to get a hold of me. I didn't get into too much detail. I'll be happy to share it with you offline. And uh, thank you for listening.